lab values, they're pretty difficult since there's so many of them. Uh, we're going to go over just a few of the most common ones. Uh, it's easy to remember stuff when it's dumb. So we're going to say a dumb story, and hopefully you'll uh, get the hang of it. So this course done by me, Joe B., and that's my YouTube channel. So we know about the Harlem Globetrotters. Uh, these guys are pretty funny. They do a lot of tricks and stuff. The only thing is, there was a group of people who joined them, and they weren't as funny. Matter of fact, uh, they preferred playing uh, prison ball, prison rules. As you can see, they uh, ended up creating their own Globetrotters, the Hemo Globetrotters. The Hemo Globetrotters, they basically uh, made you bleed. Every time they played with you, you were ended up uh, bleeding. So for the average bleed times, it's between 1 and 9 minutes. However, if they made you bleed for over 15 minutes, it was critical. So average bleed time, 1 to 9 minutes. If it's over 15, it's critical. Now for hemoglobin, heme, for every one heme, there's four oxygen molecules. So heme, one, oxygen, four. So I remember the hemoglobin for men, the one and the four. So it's 14 plus the four is 18. For women, all you do is subtract two. So for women, it's 12 to 16. So hemoglobin, men, 14 to 18. Women, subtract 2, 12 to 16. Now the hemoglobins, they, like I said, they're pretty mean, they're pretty tough, pretty vicious. However, their group that they often go up against are the crits. And normally they're in blue. Uh, now what's unique about the crits is they have uh, men and women who play. It's mainly men though. For men, it's 40 to 54%. For women, 38 to 48 now one thing I do have to stress, uh, the numbers that I'm going to be doing, they may be different from your numbers that you have in your book. And you'll see in every textbook that you have, the majority of them are going to be different. With the exception of sodium and potassium. And uh, I believe DIG. Uh, those three are pretty much the same wherever I found. So the numbers that I'm saying, if they don't correspond to your textbook, uh, just add in your numbers. But again, and the numbers I'm using are from the Hearst Review. Um, I found this on the internet. Uh, it was a Hearst Review lab values. So I'm using uh, theirs since they do mainly for the NCLEX. So again, if yours is different, you know, use your book. If not, use this one. This is going to be more of the universal, I guess. So moving on. Now due to the, the hemoglobin making so many people bleed and the hematocrits, which uh, of course they're rival enemies, the RBC, the Really Backwards Council, decided to allow the men to get more money than the women. So for the men in the uh, hematocrits, they are making 4.7 to 6.1 million dollars, and this is a year, so they're they're making a lot of money. However, the women they're doing the same thing, playing the same game. For the women, it's 4.2 to 5.4 million. And so if you just remember one number, say you remember just the men, 4.7 to 6.1, the women is less by 0 0.5 to 0 0.7. Or you just remember men and women. So for the men, 4.7, 6.1, women, 4.2, 5.4 million. Now again, due to the hemoglobin's aggressive play style, they've been fined so many times. And the people who organized this were basically the ones that the hemoglobins were beating up and they decided to make a council as well. It's the WBC, the Whining Bleeders Council. And of course RBC is uh, for the red blood count, uh, WBC white blood count, but I'm sure you know that already. So for the Whining Bleeders Council, they fine the hemoglobins every time they beat up somebody anywhere from five to ten thousand dollars. So WBC, five to ten thousand. Now with the hematocrits, they do have again men and women and they have an older group of men and women called the cholesterol. The HDL players get more than the LDL players and this isn't really because of the men and women this is because the HDL players are the good players I mean they they can really you know good offense good defense. Now the really good players the HDL for men it's 45 to 50 
And surprisingly enough, the older women on the HDL, 55 to 60, are the good players. The ones between 50 and 55, who knows what they're doing. They're probably just on the bench or getting the water or whatever. But the really good players, HDL for the men, 45 to 50. Women, 55 to 60. Now, as far as the LDL, the really bad players, these guys are really, really bad. Um, their ages are from 60 to 180. And 60 to 180, those are the really bad players. So HDL good players, men, 45 to 50. Women, 55 to 60. LDL, 60 to 180. Now, for the total players, total cholesterol for the hematocrits, is between 122 and 200 players. It's a huge group. So again, total players, total cholesterol, 122 to 200. So let's do a recap. Hemoglobin, so heme is 1, oxygen is 4, so 1 and 4, 14, plus the 4, 18. So men, 14 to 18. Women, E minus 2, 12 to 16. Hematocrit, for this one, it has men and women playing. There's more men than women. So for hematocrit, 40 to 54 percent, women, 38 to 48 percent. Now because the hemoglobins beat up everybody, and because the hematocrits have men and women playing, the RBC pays the men more than the women. Men, 4.7 to 6.1, women, 4.2 to 5.4, and do you remember the difference? 0 0.5 to 0 0.7. Now, because the hemoglobin, they beat up everybody, the WBCs made a, a fine, so every time they beat up somebody, it was five to $10,000. The really good players, HDL, is between 45 to, 50, 45 to 50 for the men, women, 55 to 60. The really bad players, man, because they're like really, really old, LDL, really bad, 60 to 180. Just remember that really old guy. And for the total cholesterol, total players, big group, 122 to 200. Now we're moving on to another section. And for this one, it's uh, having to do with theophyllin. And this is, again, in the basketball game. Uh, my Theo, which is uh, uncle in Spanish, not Uncle Sam, but this one. My Theo, he, he always has his hands out. And the reason for that, his name is, again, Theo and Philin. But we call him Philin. Because he pretends not to see well, and every time that we're going to go get hot dogs, he's always bumping into girls or women at least 10 to 20 times. Theo Philin is bumping into girls or women at least 10 to 20 times. So Theo Philin, 10 to 20, and we're always getting hot dogs. They do have a special, a game night special, on the buns, the hot dog buns, or B-U-N. And for B-U-N, it's also 10 to 20. So for the hot dog buns, you can get 10 for $20, which is an awesome deal. The only weird part is they serve them on these super expensive plates. Um, they have gold and diamonds, and it's crazy how expensive these plates are. And these plates, or platelets, are worth one fifty to $400,000. So platelets, 150000 to 400000 Now there's also a chance you can get free dessert which is awesome, everybody looks free. Uh, there's only one thing, you have to have your glucose within normal limits, and the normal glucose level is 70 to 110. Glucose 70 to 110. So win a chance to meet and greet the players, go into the locker room. However, your A1C, which is an average of three months, your hemoglobin A1C has to be either good or fair control. So that means not too many sweets. So good control is 2.5, to 5.9, fair is 6 to 8, however if you're over 8, you're automatically disqualified because that's poor control, really bad. So glucose within normal limits, 70 to 110, hemoglobin, A1C, good, 2.5 to 5.9, fair, 6 to 8, over 8, you're disqualified, it's horrible, it's really poor. So let's go ahead and recap, even though we just kind of did already. Theophilin, he's got his arms out, he's always trying to rope the women. Theophilin, 10 to 20. BUN, 10 to 20. Platelets, super expensive plates, 150,000 to 400,000. Glucose, 70 to 110. Hemoglobin, A1C, good, 2.5 to 5.9. Fair, 6 to 8. Bad, over 8. Or that's poor. Okay, now potassium. 
This guy graduated from K University. Super awesome guy. Well, awesome player, not awesome as a person. Now, his jersey, the whole time he was at K University, was 3.5 to 5. Now, he got drafted to the Hemoglobins, which are the red jerseys. The only thing, though, is his number was the same as Albumin's number. Albumin is also 3.5 to 5. Potassium would not change his number. He wanted 3.5 to 5. It, it's kind of sad. The Hemoglobin didn't want Albumin anymore. They traded him, and the Hematocrits got him. So now the Hematocrits, which are the blue ones, have Albumin, which is 3.5 to 5. So that way, Potassium could keep his number. Everybody who loved Albumin weren't, wasn't happy about it, but Potassium, he's, he's a much better player. When Albumin went to the Hematocrits, he had to get a, a, a lot of tests done. You know, make sure he's not doing any drugs. He had to get a urinalysis, which came out good. It came out great. Uh, the albumin for the urinalysis, 0 to 8. The pH, 4.628. The WBC, 0 to 4. And the glucose was negative, because you never want sugar in your urine. So urinalysis, albumin, 0 to 8. pH, 4.628. WBC, 0 to 4. Glucose, negative. And I guess you can remember this, uh, albumin ends with 8, pH also ends with 8. The pH starts with a 4.6, and the WBC ends in a 4. So 0, 8, albumin, pH 4.6 to 8, WBC 0 to 4, and glucose is negative. And here's a little cartoon art. The nurse walks in to the guy, you're going to get the urinalysis, and the guy goes, so I'm probably not going to pass the urine test, am I, as he's holding the cat. That's not one way to pass it. Now, not only did Albumin have to get the urinalysis, he also had to get blood work done, uh, which also came out good because the protein was 6.4 to 8.3. So protein, 6.4 to 8.3. Okay, now we're getting to the kind of controversial, more controversial when it comes to potassium. Sodium and potassium have an inverse relationship, which basically means when one's up, the other one's down, and vice versa. So sodium is 135 to 145, potassium, as we mentioned, 3.5 to 5. Now, they kind of have a restraining order, and when I say kind of, they do. Uh, it's a long story, but I'll kind of sum it up. Now, potassium, when he's on the court, sodium must be off the court. And when sodium's on the court, potassium must be off the court. Now, what had happened, potassium went out with sodium's wife, ammonia. And this from what sodium knows, it's anywhere from eight, 10 to 80 times. Potassium, he's not going to admit to anything, but sodium knows he went out with his wife for at least 10 to 80 times. And ammonia is not going to say anything because, you know, she married to a basketball player and he's got a lot of money. So that's why potassium and sodium cannot be near each other because if they do, they will get into it. So sodium, 135 to 145. Potassium, 3.5 to 5. They can't be on the same court because of ammonia. They love triangle. Ammonia, 10 to 80. Okay, so some more drama. Phosphorus was already with the hematocrits, and his number was the same as albumin's. However, Phosphorus did not want to leave. This is where he grew up. This is where he wanted to play when he was a kid, and he actually reduced his number by 0.5. So potassium is 3.5 to 5, albumin 3.5 to 5, phosphorus, or they call him the phos, reduce his number, so his is 3 to 4.5. That way he can stay playing where he's playing. 3 to 4.5 phosphorus. So let's go ahead and recap. Potassium 3.5 to 5, albumin 3.5 to 5, phosphorus, you reduce it by 0 0.5, phosphorus 3 to 4.5, Sodium, 135 to 145. Ammonia, which was the one they were going out with, anywhere from 10 to 80. The urinalysis, albumin, 0 to 8. pH, 4.628. WBC, 0 to 4. Glucose, negative, because you never want to have glucose in your urine. Blood test, protein, 6.4 to 8.3. Okay, moving on. Now, the next section, the hemoglobin's mascot is very unique cow. Do you see them? The numbers? Calcium has spots that look like a 9.5 to 10. 
So calcium, 9.5 to 10. Now, don't let the cow fool you. She's packing heat. She has two guns. Uh, you really can't see them because they're pretty small, really small, matter of fact. And these guns, they're special gold magnum guns. And one measures 1.3 inches, the other one 2.1 inches. So just imagine this cow with spots, 9.5 to 10 on its side, and it's packing heat. Two magnum guns, 1.3 inches and 2.1 inches. Magnum, 1.3 to 2.1. Okay, so back to the basketball game. Potassium, he just won the CVP award. Now, this, was, this is an award that they always go for. It's almost like the NVP, but this is the CVP, Central Venus Pressure. Now, he's won it two times, but Sodium, his enemy, his rival, has won it six times. So, Potassium is striving to beat Sodium, or at least to tie him up. So, CVP, two to six. Now, Potassium, he's making a lot of money. Man, he's making some money. And he's sponsored by Lithium. Potassium actually consumes lith lithium and he's always carrying lithium bottles and just trying to promote it that way he gets more money and he consumes anywhere from 0 0.6 to sometimes even double that 1.2 liters a day okay now let's see if you've retained any of this I'm gonna say hemoglobin and what comes to your mind hemoglobin these are the guys who didn't make the Harlem Globetrotters they beat up everybody so heme 1 4 oxygen men 14 to 18, you add that 4. For the women, you subtract 2, 12 to 16. Hematocrit, they're the guys in blue. And they have men and women, right? So for the men, it's more than the women. Men, 40 to 54. Women, 38 to 48. Now, the hemoglobin, they're always beating up people. Remember those bloody pictures? The first one was 1 to 9 minutes. The second one, he was really bloody. And it's critical if it's over 15 minutes. Now, do you remember the... RBC, where they pay the men more than the women, difference of 0 0.5 to 0 0.7. For the men, they make 4.7 to 6.1 6 million. For the women, 4.2 to 5.4 million. Now, remember those whining people who always got beat up and they ended up making a fine for the hemoglobins? WBC, 5,000 to 10,000. Okay, so back to the hematocrits. Remember they have the men and women? Well, they have a really old group. Remember what that old group was called? Cholesterol. Now, for cholesterol, there's two. There's the good players and the bad players. The good players are the HDL. Remember that one where they got basketball players playing? They're kind of old. The men, 45 to 50. Women, 55 to 60. And I really don't know what's up with the 50 to 55. I guess they're, you know, on the bench or getting Gatorade. I don't know what they're doing. So just remember, men, 45 to 50. Women, 55 to 60. The really bad players, I mean, I really think they just have them there for the, I don't know, publicity. But the really bad players are from 60 to 180. They really can't do anything. Remember that old guy in the corner, bottom right-hand corner? The really, really old guy? Well, he's the 180. He can't do nothing. So the really bad players, 60 to 180. Now, you remember that group picture? That was a total cholesterol. For that one, it's 120 to 200. So total cholesterol, total players... 120 to 200 a lot of players okay moving on to the next section remember at the basketball game where we're gonna go get those hot dogs remember my Theo's name my uncle Theo Philin Theo Philin is always bumping into girls right he's always trying to to grab people and remember that he does that at least 10 to 20 times every single time 10 to 20 remember how much those uh, hot dog buns were 10 to 20 10 for 20 dollars and remember what they were served on those really expensive plates 150,000 to 400,000 and they had jewels and gold and di just crazy crazy amount so those are 150 to 1,000 to 400,000 now remember you can get that free ice cream or that free dessert if your glucose was car if your glucose was within normal limits right that's 70 to 110 and then you can get that back that meet and greet to go into their locker room that meet and greet you had you had your a1c good or fair Good is 2.5 to 5.9, fair, 6 to 8. What happened if it was over 8? You were disqualified, right? So that was poor, poor control. Now the next section, potassium. Now these are the basketball players. These are the ones where they're actually playing on the court. And potassium and albumin, they have the same number, 3.5 to 5. Potassium's on the hemoglobin. Albumin is on the hematocrit. Now I'm only using that reference to tell you, you know, they're on different teams. 
but uh, there's no really no specific reason. I'm just you know just to make the story a little bit better, I guess. So there's there's really no you know hematic crater, hematic uh, hemoglobin. So I hope that doesn't confuse you. Now phosphorus, remember he had the same number, but he did not want to be kicked to another team. He wanted to stay there, so he reduced his number by 0 0.5. So phosphorus is 3 to 4.5. Sodium is 135 to 145. Ammonia was in the love triangle, and that was 10 to 80. So that's the reason potassium and sodium cannot be on the, the same basketball court. The urinalysis, albumin had to pass that one, remember that? So for the urinalysis, albumin, 0 to 8. The pH, 4.6 to 8. WBC, 0 to 4. And the glucose is negative. You never want sugar in your urine. The blood test, the protein is 6.4 to 8.3. For the calcium, the calcium, the numbers, it had the 9.5 to 10. And I'm not sure if you can catch it, but on here it's not correct. I will correct it in just a moment. I just realized that. For the calcium, 9.5 to 10. Magnesium, remember those real little guns, those little magnums? For the magnesium, 1.3 to 2.1. Remember that ruler? CVP, this is the one that potassium had two awards, but sodium had six awards. So CVP, 2 to 6. Now this one I didn't go over, but I think they're kind of important. So here they go. Dig for dig the levels, 0 0.5 to 2. So dig, 0 0.5 to 2. And the ALT and the AST, both of these have to do with the liver. Even though I, I found this one on uh, the Hearst Review, I believe I saw a different numbers on other, like, re like really different than in, on other places. I'm just going to have this one here. But again, if yours is different, uh, go with yours. All right, and that concludes the uh, lab values. It's easy to remember stuff when it's dumb. And I must admit, this was pretty dumb. But because it's dumb, I'm sure you're going to remember at least half of them. And then, you know, watch the video again, take notes. In addition to that, I do have, I made it like a booklet to where when you print it out, you can actually do it. It's kind of like the, the one that for the cranial nerves that I did. But on this one, it's an actual booklet. Print it. Uh, you print it back in front. And now we can just fold it up. Very easy to carry with you, study. Now, I am going to be selling the uh, actual book. If you want to get it, great. Uh, if not, you know, just write your notes or whatever. And it'll, ha it'll be for four ninety nine. And uh, like I said, it's a booklet. And uh, just remember, if you make it dumb, it's easy to remember. Hopefully, you all pick it up. If not, just watch the video a few times. Thank you guys so much. Please, if this helped, comment, rate, subscribe. Especially click that uh, like button. That, that really lets me know that it's, you know, well worth the time that and effort that I put into this. Thank you guys so much. Appreciate it. Take care.